Good morning, Hank. It's Monday, March 29th, 2010. It's tax season, which means that I must once again for the 32nd consecutive year report to the Internal Revenue Service that I have failed to garner any fishing boat proceeds. French the llama, fishing boat proceeds are the unicorns of my tax return. And now, Hank, having alienated all our new viewers, I begin the video. So, Hank, I have a bad habit of Googling myself. Hello, Holden Caulfield hat. How did you get here? So the other day I was Googling myself and I discovered something absolutely incredible. Wait, 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 wait. I have something important to discuss, which is that in a few days I have a book coming out that I co-wrote with David Levithan and we are going on tour. And some of the events on the tour are ticketed, others are not. To find out if yours is ticketed, go to the link in the doobly-doo. Right, Hank, so I discovered something pretty incredible and it wasn't that there is a guy named John Green who is one of the four horsemen of Sasquatchery. That I already knew because one time I read an article for Mental Floss magazine in which I talked about the fact that Bigfoot is, you know, Fictional? And I totally got a letter from famous Bigfoot apologist John Green who said my anti-Bigfoot propaganda was besmirching the good name of John Green's everywhere. Right, so that is not what I discovered. What I discovered, this is kind of annoying, the tassel. How did Holden deal with the tassel? What I discovered is that a line I wrote years ago in my book An Abundance of Catherines has kind of gone viral on Twitter. It's been tweeted more than 10,000 times. The line is, Che senso la vita se il magno no provi a fare chi sodificanto. I don't speak Italian. The line is, what is the point of being alive if you don't at least try to do something remarkable? Which I will admit I did write in this book, but as anyone who's read it knows, I was kidding. That's something Colin Singleton, the main character of the book, who's kind of a child prodigy, says at the beginning of the book, and he must spend the entire book learning is bull. I don't know how it looks on the screen there on YouTube, but in the viewfinder it looks a little bit like a lady hat. But I promise it is not. It is the actual replica, the actual replica, of a hat worn by a fictional character in a novel. Nerdfighters. Anyway, Hank, this phenomenon, it seems to me, is near universal in the internet age, which is that instead of people being misquoted, they are miscontextualized. It's impossible to pull a line or a sentence or even a chapter from a book and understand the meaning of that section. Because as much as it pains us in this soundbitey, twittery world, text means nothing without its context. For instance, Holden Caulfield's Red Hunting Cap doesn't really make any sense until you have the context telling you that it's the same color as his dead brother's hair. Look, she's wearing a hat. It's not a metaphor, I just thought it was funny. Anyway, Hank, the whole thing made me think about something. Maybe our favorite quotations say more about us than they say about the stories and people we're quoting. So, nerdfighters, what's your favorite quote? Leave it down below in comments, and then let's think about what that says about us. I mean, how did Holden Caulfield deal with the tassel issue? Is that ever covered in the text? My favorite quote of the moment is from Robert Frost, the only way out is through. I don't know what that says about me, but I'm sure you'll tell me in comments, and then we'll all tell each other what our quotes say about each other. Okay, gotta get rid of this tassel, so annoying. Hank, I'll see you on Wednesday. From some angles it's a lady hat, and then from some angles it's like, it's a me, Mario!